Welcome to the second episode of Indigenous Insights. I am your host, Claire Parker, owner and designer of fashion label Claire Helen. My mob are the Tiwi mob from Tiwi Islands up in Northern Territory. I grew up in Larrakia country, uh, also known as Darwin. Um, our guest for today is the lovely Brody George from Delamaya Swim. Brody, tell us a little bit about yourself. So my name's Brody. I mm. am from Fitzroy Crossing. I'm a Wamajori Gunyandi woman. Mm. Uh, I am the owner of Jalamia Swim. Um, I started this brand 18 months ago and have slowly progressed and sort of built the brand bigger and bigger. As mentioned, I've had lots of businesses. Um, <laughs> I'm entrepreneurial. I like to run my own things. Um, so this is where I am now. Uh, can you share more about the influence of your Walamajari and Gunyari heritage on your artistic creation and swimwear designs? Yes. Yeah, so obviously uh, the Walamajari side is Western Desert Mob, so it's very bright, it's very colourful, mm. um, lots of it's sort of landscape driven, the artwork. So yeah. that's where I, a lot of my inspiration comes from. Um, there is Munkaja Arts in Fitzroy Crossing, which is quite yeah. well known. Yeah. And um, lots of the stuff. elders there paint in Munkaja Arts. So I used to go there as a kid, watch all the old people. Um, I am one of the only ones in my immediate family, the Till family, to mm. paint. So that's quite nice that I'm able to sort of keep that going. We have elders that do it as well. Um, but it's nice that I get to continue that. So... That's where a lot of the inspiration comes from. It's nice because you can um, pass it on to the next generation as well. Yeah. And so my daughter's already started showing oh, an interest and she beautiful. likes to have a little bit of like help and input in my designs and she'll yeah. sit there and she'll watch me do it. And I've started digital art recently and I'm doing yeah. it yeah, digitally. And so she wanted me to get her a little pen. Yeah. And now she started painting on her iPad as well. Oh. So yeah, yeah. And it's very therapeutic as oh, well. Oh, so you know? therapeutic, and yeah. It's good that you keep teaching the younger generation culture so you're yeah. keeping that culture strong. Yeah. yeah, especially living down here I think mm. as well. You know, we're, we're quite far away from it. Yeah. So I want to keep that going for my kids and I want my kids to be really proud of it. Yeah, I understand that. So it's hard being away from home as well. Yes. So you, it keeps you a bit closer to home. Mm -hmm. um, so your designs have a distinct bright desert style with a modern adaption. How do you balance traditional Indigenous aesthetic with contemporary fashion trends in your swimwear collection? I am very um, particular about what I paint. Mm. I try not to use symbols. I try not to use things that are sort of used in a very traditional way because mm. I don't want there to be any misconception that I'm using the symbols in the wrong way. So that's mm. where the modern adaption comes in yeah. and I'm very kind of painting my interpretation of the landscape. So the, my view of the landscape so all the detail that you see in it is a lot of sort of things that I've seen when I go back home and you know there's small mm. fine details in in the rocks and in the leaves and in the flowers and the way the streams work and things like that it's more what I try to incorporate rather than using those really traditional sort of symbolisms yeah mm. that's why I loved how you said that it um represents uh, the cooler nights mm. and the hot days mm. and it's so true because I think, yeah, that's a big thing in Australia where it's very hot and then when you get to the evening time, yes. it's, yeah. Especially up there, especially in the desert. We, yeah. When we were younger, we went on a camping trip with our elders and I remember it being so hot during the day. So they took mm. us right out to where we're from, the Wamajuri side. Yeah. And I remember it being really, really hot during the day and at night it was freezing. We were in our swags mm. and I remember like being doubled up, you know, holding onto the thing and my feet being really cold yeah. and, you know, the complete contrast of the two. Yeah. Mm. So I think that's beautiful how you um, said that about your designs and interpret that in that way. Um, so moving from Fitzroy Crossing to Perth for high school, how do you maintain a strong connection to your roots, family, culture, despite the distance? Um, I'm constantly in contact with my family. Mm. Um, I go up as much as I can. I haven't been able to go up in about two years. No. Um, we bought another house last year, so obviously that comes with an expense. Yeah. But the year previous we went up and I'm going back next month. So um, That's good. unfortunately yeah. a lot of the time we feel like we go up for funerals, which yeah. is, you know, difficult. Yeah, I know the feeling. And it's sad. expensive to travel mm. from Perth to Broome. So and yeah. then we have to drive and car hire and everything else just gets really expensive. But, yeah, I'm really lucky that I'm in contact with a lot of my family still, mm. um, especially with my mum's side. 
Uh, we have lots of family down here too, which is also nice. Yeah. A lot of us have moved down here. Um, a lot of us are sort of all over the place, all over the world. So I keep in mm. contact with the family and, you know, and we're, I think we're quite lucky that in Fitzroy there's still lots of cultural practices that take place. So yeah. you're kind of aware of things like at the moment, you know, um, just recently has been men's business that's gone on. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, you're, you're aware of it and you know who's doing it and who's involved and th- th- you're across all these things. So you still feel like you have that really strong connection of mm. what's going on in the town. And yeah. um, my parents, well, my dad's always been there. My dad's got here, he's white, but mm. he's basically black because the way... He grew you know, up there yeah, in the country. Yeah, yeah, he spent like over 30 years there or something. Yeah. So he probably sounds blacker than the rest of us, to be honest. But... <laughs> um, He's still there constantly, mm. so obviously he's always there with family. We speak to Dad constantly as well. Mm. And my mum's just taken on a um, a secondment to DFES after the floods in Fitzroy. So oh, yeah, I was going to ask about how yeah, that um, yeah. is going. Mum and Dad were really badly way. affected with that. Oh, um, no. So Mum kind of does like a two-week on, two-week off roster. Yeah. So, yeah, Mum and Dad always up there in the town and, you know. It's really Facebook. good. Yeah, Facebook's another nice way to mm. always see, you know, all Fa- the yarns that was happening back home. <laughs> Living in the modern day now, we yeah, can communicate yeah. with everyone. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Even old, the old people there, they're calling up yeah. FaceTime, like, oh, hey, you know how to do that. Yeah. It's too yeah. deadly. <laughs> Makes you laugh sometimes. They still send you random stuff all the oh, time yeah, in yeah. inbox. Yeah. They don't know what they're sending. but oh. So, Jalamea, did I say it again? Jalamea. Jalamea. Oh. Yeah. Jalamia Swim brand is described as a celebration of culture, sustainable and inclusive. Can you elaborate on how these values manifest in your swimwear design mm. and business practices? Mm. So I, about four years ago, I embarked on sort of a holistic kind of low tox, um, zero waste kind of lifestyle and mm. I've incorporated that into our home. So a lot of that is, you know, low tox products, beauty mm. products, um, fabrics that I'm using and I'm purchasing for myself are Mm. kind of like your linens and things like that to sort of know that they break down a bit better. Um, Mm. Having a really staple wardrobe Mm. and not, not, not over consuming, I suppose is probably a good word to use. And, um, I obviously have had kids, so my body's changed a little bit and adapting to that. I used yeah. to be quite slim and now I've, you know, put on more weight than I'd like to, but that's all part of motherhood. Yeah. Um, and learning so to accept yourself that, exactly. as well and your new skin Exactly. As well, that's good. That's probably mm. what it's been is learning to accept who I am. Yeah. So all of those values are kind of carried over to the brand. I think mm. if you want something... If you want to, if you're going to do something, I think it has to be authentic to you. Yeah. And that's why I think my brand's working because it is very authentic to me. It's, you know, yeah. it's, I'm country, I call it country conscious with being aware of having, you know, low stock, not, not a lot of overproduction of things. The materials yeah. that I'm using, are, you know, made from recycled plastics, things like that. Um, the inclusive obviously you know for me having that understanding and and being aware of my customer base as well I think like a lot of my customers are 25 to 45 which are similar to me their mums you know Mm. like you still want to feel really good about yourself but you kind of do want to cover up a little bit Um, so that's why I kind of get that inclusiveness in with the sort of two ends of the scale yeah so Mm. it goes up to 24 isn't it the size 20 yes 24 Amazing, mm, yeah. I, mm. I love that photo shoot with all the different yeah, women yes. and all different shapes and sizes and yes. all skill, skin tones. Yeah. It, just beautiful. Yeah. I, I think that was a, quite an iconic photo shoot yeah. because I don't think I've ever seen um, a like photo shoot with that, like quite a different, like, yeah. I, I can't say the word for it, um, just a quite... A large number of different women mm, mm, showcased mm. in it. Uh, you don't get that often. It's usually no. just one or two people. Yeah. So it was good to see that kind of um, comparison mm. as well and show all the diver- diverse beauty of mm. all the women. Mm. And a lot of the a lot of the models as well. Um, they're all volunteers. They all volunteer mm. for it. And it's kind of like a two way street. You know, mm. for me, obviously, it helps my brand. But for yeah. them, it's it's a huge confidence boost. And from mm. all ends of the scale, like I had a cousin recently, and she's very slim. That was in our mm. latest photo shoot. And you just don't think that the skinny girls, skinny girls, 
are self-conscious you know yeah, what I mean but yeah. they, they are they're just you know it's, they can be as self-conscious as say your bigger girls yeah and so it's really nice she walked she was very nervous and then yeah. one of her best friends was when in my earlier shoots and mm. she almost pulled out of it and I remember having to like talk her off the ledge and be like no it'll be great rah, rah, rah. Yeah. and she ended up rocking up then she was in my second photo shoot because she loved it so much and it gave her <laughs> such a confidence boost yeah. um and I think that's what I love about it too is that the girls that are taking part in their shoots mm. they're getting something out of it one yeah. they're getting really beautiful photos and I've said to them I said your kids are going to be able to look at mm. these photos and look at your, their mum and go wow that's so amazing mum you know yeah. they're going to have these really beautiful photos to look back yeah. on and I just, I like that I'm doing that for women as well. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of talk about Aboriginal businesses and giving back to community. And I know a lot of the time people sort of think think it's financial, that you have to give back in a yeah. finance sense. But I feel that I'm giving back to the models by giving them that confidence boost. Yeah. And then it comes into their home, you know, like after one of the photo shoots, one of the girls, she went home and... She kind of went on this like self-care kick afterwards. It's yeah. like she really loved herself after the photo shoot and yeah. she sort of went home and started eating better and looking after mm. herself and, you know, her kids are then going to watch her doing that and being like, oh, wow. You know, it's like a, it's like a um, what's the word? Like Step, a um, ripple effect. Yeah, it yeah, is. It, is. Yeah. it definitely is. Yeah. And the, yeah, they kind of realise their potential. Exactly. And so exactly. it encourages them, I guess, yeah, to... I, I know the situation because mm. even me, I remember not like when I was younger, um, just not being able to get jobs and stuff and then, you know, you get a job and mm. then it just kind of boosts your confidence mm. and, mm. yeah, it, it's encouraging people to, I guess, step outside the box. Exactly. And, yeah. Yeah, and especially I think with, with Aboriginal women, you know, a lot of us there is that kind of – we don't have a lot of that self-confidence because yeah. there's been oppression and things like that. Yes. And 100%. I know that swimwear is kind of like a little bit taboo because there's a modesty aspect um, with yeah. the Aboriginal culture. But I've been questioning that lately. Can I, get, can I get a bit – I don't want to get too like – thing, but I, I want to speak to one of my judges about this and you can sort of chime in if you want to and yeah. give your opinion on it. But I wonder where did that modesty aspect come into it, right? Because yeah. 250 years ago, we would have all been walking around naked in front of each other. Yes. And there would have been no, you know, like, oh, you need to be covered up because mm. you're, you know, for this aspect. And I've spoken to one of my brothers about this too. Mm. So I've tried to speak to the other side and it, the, the conversation may, may have been a bit uncomfortable for him and I was very gentle in the conversation. Mm. But I just wonder where that came from because... We wouldn't have been covered up. You know what I mean? Yeah. There wouldn't have it may maybe there was a modesty cloth for certain times of the month and things like mm. that. But did this come about due to colonization and yeah. the sexualization of Aboriginal women? You know, is that yeah. where it came into it? So now all of a sudden we have to be covered up and we have yeah. to be, you know, is it is it a uh, evolution of culture rather than a very mm. traditional cultural practice yeah and I know you know with bathers we are covering our modest areas you know yeah. but I think there's a difference between dressing provocatively and then dressing for self-confidence yeah and I'm really torn I feel very torn with that lately and I've been questioning that a lot so when I go back up north I think I'm going to speak to one of my judges about it and mm. just sort of understand where that came into it yeah. It's funny you say that because I've actually had a similar um, kind of experience just trying to, I guess, even me wearing a swimsuit at the moment, mm. I still feel a bit uncomfortable because mm. of the views I grew up mm -hmm. with, um, especially growing up on community. Same. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah. wear bathers back home. Yeah, 100%. Mm. And I think it does have a bit of religious influence because mm. um, our, where I'm from is very, um, everyone's quite religious, um, Catholic mm, mm. church is very, yeah, going to church every day. And so maybe I think that's where that comes into play. Mm. But yeah, it has probably a lot of different aspects, mm, like you mm. said. And yeah, I'm trying to question as well. Me too. Because um, I'm, you know, self-expression now yeah, is a big thing. Exactly. And everyone is all quite, um, they have their individual yep. um, approach to how they wear their outfits yep. or how they want to yep. express themselves. So, yeah, it's good to kind of ask those mm, questions mm. and see. And I, and I look at, there was the first photo shoot that I had. I had um, my Aboriginal models. Mm. I don't know if any of them were my cousins. But I had my Irish cousins in that one. Mm. And looking at the difference between my Irish cousins and how they're just so free in their bodies, mm. you know, to just 
be and just dress however they want and not feel like, oh, I've got to be covered or, you know, this and that. Yeah. As opposed to how I grew up where mm. I had to be well, like very covered up yeah. and things like that. And I sort of, not that I would dress, I, I, I'm a mum, I'm not going to be out here, you know, flashing everything, yeah. but I I just would like to be able to dress in a confident way Yeah. without feeling like, am I offending someone, yeah. you know? Exactly. Yeah. I know exactly what you mm. mean. Yeah. I, same experience. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, because you wouldn't when you're back home, right? Like, yeah. you, like I, I'd be very conscious of what I'm wearing. When I go yeah. back there next month, I'll be, you know, mm. well covered. And I, if, you know, like I know when we go to the river as a family, I'll swim in shorts and T-shirt. Yeah. I won't swim in a... Baggy shorts yeah, and shirt. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to be swimming is, yeah. in like a one piece even, you know. Yeah. I probably wouldn't even have something like this. I would just... Baggy shirt and yeah. shorts. That's why in Perth I'd probably wear – I went swimmers oh, here. in Perth, yeah. Yeah, when you go home. Yep. And that's the thing, hey, it's like um, a time and place kind of yes. thing. But, yeah, it's good when you ask questions because yeah. you want to find out the roots of this um, kind of how I mean. that will happen. Yeah. And, yeah, because I think also as well for, for women in our hometowns, mm. you know what I mean, like how if they're able to express themselves a bit more, would there be more self-confidence, you know? Yeah. Would there be more self-love if they were to be able to express themselves a little bit differently? Yeah. And dress a little bit differently? Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, 100%. Mm. I, always think, I always think about that and, mm. yeah, it's good to see yeah. all the different, yeah, expressions yeah. now, so. And, and, I, and I was very, up until about three years ago I suppose I was very like no this is how it is like mm. we have to be covered we have to be this and and then I just started to think you know as you get older you mature yeah. a bit and you sort of think about things and you think hang on a sec like we wouldn't have been like this you know 200 years mm. ago so why is it like this now yeah mm. yeah that, there's that's why I've noticed there's sometimes you get some of the I guess um opposing views on those kind of mm. things but it's good to ask questions yeah and yeah, everyone's different. That's the best thing about it. That's yes. why I love fashion and yes. swimwear and, yeah. you know, because you can be individual person mm. and mm. have your own type of And you have expression. your own, you have your own customer base. Yeah. You know, like you say, like there's so many brands out there at the moment, but there's so many different customer bases yeah. for everyone. I just feel that there's enough, there's enough to go around for everybody. Yes. Yeah. And I was just saying to someone the other day, I said, um, you know, it just makes me so proud. Because when I first started fashion, well, the reason why I wanted to start fashion is because there was limited um, fashion that um, mm. kind of ex um, that showcased Indigenous storytelling mm. and that catered to us and, you know, as people. Mm. So, yeah, that's how my journey went into mm. fashion design mm. was to... Now I can see a lot of other brands coming mm. out. So... Mm. It's like saturated, so I'm like, I love it, I mm, love it, because mm. now you've got all these options. Every, exactly, yeah. like I, like my husband's Mouldy from New Zealand. Yeah. And I remember, this was 15 years ago, the first time we went, mm. like he took me back home, and I was shocked by how celebrated Mouldy culture is versus yeah. Aboriginal culture in yeah. Australia. You know, like you get off the plane and you're walking into the airport and there was this beautiful Mouldy carving, mm. and I was like... Oh my God, we're walking. Whereas now, so it's so really only now hmm, in the last starting, five years yeah. or so that you're starting to see Aboriginal artwork as you come into our airports. Yeah. Maybe even going to Macca's over there and the the counter was had a carving in it. You know, yeah, Macca's of yeah. all places. You would just never think that it would be somewhere like that. But it's stunning that yeah, they celebrate yeah, the culture exactly, over there. And yeah, it's starting to grow a bit more now. Yeah, that's but I'm what hoping I hope. it's not just a trend. Yes, it's going to be around. That's what I worried about for longer. Mm. And that's I. I feel like Aboriginal fashion in general mm. is flourishing at the yes. moment. And, and this think, makes my heart happy. Me you know, too. And I to really like. That. I really want to encourage not only Aboriginal people to wear yeah. it, and I put that in my blurb because yeah. you're probably the same. I yeah. always have people saying, "Oh, can I wear your designs?" Mm. I'm like, "Of course." I want it to be a celebration of it. Like, I want people to be yeah. inspired and proud to wear it and walk yeah. around and you know, even go overseas and be wearing it and be yeah. like, "Oh, yeah, this is Aboriginal designs." You know. Yeah. That's what I want to see. It's good everything. to start a conversation as well. When you, I think I was in America and. Um, explaining, oh, yeah, I'm Aboriginal. And someone was like, oh, I've never met oh, an yeah. Aboriginal before. Yeah. And they kind of ask you about your story yeah. and then you kind of just explain. So when you're wearing these beautiful outfits, they can say, oh, where'd you get that? Yeah. 
you're starting a conversation exactly. there to talk to yeah. someone about and the those story. mob over there in America they're similar to us right yeah. you know like when we went there we went for a Kentucky and we were speaking to some of them and their experiences mm. as indigenous people are yeah. like us they're very similar yeah, so of very course similar. I'd be really interested in our culture and same as we're interested in theirs yeah mm. exactly because I think yeah even um, African American mob they're like yeah, yeah they're always so interested to learn and yeah. like it's very rare that you, I've ever met like an Aboriginal person which is kind of sad because yeah. I've never heard much but um, it's good in that sense because then you're kind of educating mm. them and telling them you know mm. this is what it's like in you know it's good mm. and it's good you just kind of um, learning each other's culture mm. as well mm. which is good and I think it's important like for me I think this is the good thing right with you and I living down here in the mm. city is that we're exposed to so many different people yeah you know exactly. like my the last school my daughter was at was very multicultural so there was yeah. all like there, I think there was like three white kids you know they were yeah. two of others were like Irish and my daughter was one of the fair, like fair ones in the class yeah. And they was they loved learning about culture, you know. Yeah. They wanted, and I loved learning about their culture. That yeah. was the great thing. So it was like this once again that two way street where we just got to yarn and learn about it. Yeah. And I think that's what's great about living down here is that you have this big, wide pool of people that mm. you can showcase it to. And you yeah. know, whereas if you're back home, obviously, you know, it's all family and everything. But being down here, you get to educate the masses. Yes. On it. Mm. Exactly. Mm. And then you're also meeting, yeah, other people, which is good. In terms of logistics, how has managing the operational and manufacturing aspects of Delamaya Swim been for you? I was hoping this question would come up because I wanted to share this. So when I started 18 months ago, because I wanted like... I wanted to see, I wanted to test the water to see how the brand would go mm. without having to lay out huge capital. So I did a print on demand sort of style to begin with yeah. and I tested the water and sort of seen how it goes. Mm. So now I'm finally at a point where I'm actually designing, speaking with manufacturers. Mm. So my next collection will be designed by me like – and like hand-drawn designed yeah. as in does, like all the little specs and details yeah. are going to be right down that to a T. Yes, yeah, the little, you, you know, little... removing the padding and yeah. cutting it this way. And I'm actually really glad that I did it the way I've done it because I haven't had to ha lay out a lot of capital yeah. until now. Obviously, I'm at a point where I do have to lay out capital and that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's been an interesting journey. And, I, and I've said that to people, like, and I'm more than happy to share, you know, where mm. I've got things from because I think if you're going to test something, it's a good way to do it without, see, mm. you know, I've got a friend and she sort of laid out a lot of costs and now she's got lots and lots of stock left mm. over. And I think for her, awesome. I think for me that was watching her journey was yeah. sort of... You learn from that. Exactly. You sort of see like, yeah. okay, this is what can happen. Mm. Um, so I've done it that way and now I'm, yeah, in the really... You pass the kind of test and trial exactly. stages, so you're yes. yeah yep. at a point where you're a bit more confident with yes. the yeah that's really good. And I have an so understanding uh, too of my my customer base, my sizings, yeah. uh, my styles that people like. Yeah, you know, you like I have a best sellers exactly. Yeah. I have a really good understanding now. If I look at my analytics um, of what how many sizes I should order, yeah. um, you know, what sort of styles people are going to like, mm -hmm. so I can really hone in on that customer base of mine. Yeah. Mm. I'm obsessed with the um, high-waisted um, yeah. pants. It's yes. got a wrap at the front. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I've got the um, high waist and they're great, you know, like yeah. for me. I'm, I've had two kids. So I want to suck everything yeah. in a little bit. I think we all want to, yeah, like, suck yeah, something in. Like, yeah. And then there yeah. are other girls that want the sort of skimpy ones. Yeah. So my next collection is going to have um, the high waist for yeah. girls like us and then it's going to have, like, a little bit of a skimpier style. Yeah. And then I've even been able to look at my analytics as well and see – with the high waist, I can look at my sizes and go, okay, mm. I need this many of this size. Yeah. And then with the skimpier style, I can go, okay, I need this many of this yeah. size. So that's been the really good thing about doing the print on demand yeah. style or sort of, you know, not style, but, you know, going into it that way because yeah. now I have a really clear idea. Yeah, of mm. your stock and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Can you share more about the role of self-love, empowerment in the community you are creating with Jalamaya Swim and how it translates into your swimwear campaign? Hmm. Um, I suppose we sp spoke a little bit on it before. Yeah. But I 
people have said to me that they like that I'm included in the shoots, that I yeah. take part in them. They think I love that, that. Yeah, they said that that's a really good thing that I'm part of it. Yeah. I mean, I've got to walk the walk, right? Can't yeah. just talk the talk and be like, yeah, love yourself no matter what your size is, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And yeah. often leading up like to the campaigns and stuff, I sort of think to myself, oh, I should have gone to the gym or I should have done this. But then I just think, you know mm. what? This is me. This is who I am. This is how yeah. I look. I'm just going to go there and do what I need to do. I kind of get that, you know. That my that work mindset happening. Yeah. Um. So I feel like me being part of the photo shoots really shows the girls like, okay, mm. well Brody's doing it. Like we're all here to do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Um. And then to be honest, even when the photos do, like when Sarah sends me the galleries, mm. and I see some photos of myself, I'm like, oh wow, I actually don't yeah. look too bad, you know. Yeah. And it kind of gives me that little bit of confidence boost the way it's same yeah. way it has the girls too. Yeah. And I know, like I said, the girls. They're the same. They've all looked at these photos and they've really mm. loved them and they've shared them and it's kind of given them that con- – Shauna, actually. Yeah. She, when she did it, she was like, oh, I'm so glad I did it. She loved it. Yeah. You know, she loved the photos she got of herself and she just didn't really enjoy the day. Mm. And it's a real – on the day of the photo shoots, it's like a real um, celebration of – like womanhood yeah it's like you that feel real, that connection can, as well yeah like you, yeah you feel the vibes you can, when everybody else is exactly it's just such a love. nice environment of just yeah. all women like you know when you were there it was such a nice environment of women and we mm. all just celebrate each other and we all just hang out and yeah. you know one girl's getting her photo done and the others are just kind of in the background yarning yeah, and we're all catching. helping each other yeah. and um the second photo shoot i had for mm. the paranga collection um my cousin and I, Lydiella, Camilla, yeah. we had our kids. And just come in all different sizes yeah. and shapes and it's normal. It's not, you know, nothing wrong with it. It's just part of life. Yeah. Mm. And that's the thing. The mind is a very powerful thing because, yeah. Um, yeah, like you said, um, sometimes you're like, oh, have I gone to the – I need to go to the yeah. gym. I need to do that. But, yeah, a lot of a lot of that comes with people kind of have that negative connotation mm. with, um, you know, unhealthy habits. Mm. But it's like there's unhealthy habits in people that go to the gym as exactly. well. Yeah. There's unhealthy habits yeah. with people who are – like underweight or yep. people, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. It, there's always going to have that um, yeah. negative connotation attached to it. Yeah. And so that that's good that you're celebrating that inclusion. Mm. And mm. Yeah. And I think it's, it's, really it's more so about the way you carry yourself too. Yeah. Like I might have things that I don't like physically about myself, but I really mm. like who I am in here. Yeah. So I think my internal Brody carries yeah. a lot of external Brody. To yeah. say, like, well, I'm really confident inside, mm. so whatever, like, whatever's on the outside, who cares? You know, people are going to remember what who I was as a person as opposed to yeah. what I looked like. Looks aren't always going to be there. No, yeah, exactly. They're gonna we're going to yeah. get old and wrinkly and it's mm. all part of life, so, you know. I think confidence is definitely key. A lot of yes. people um, tend to – they draw themselves to people who are, you know, they're good people, mm. you know, and mm. not – Someone who's just into their looks mm, and how, mm. but it's good to be, you know, love yourself as mm, well, mm. which is good. And I think as well as a, as a person and as a brand, mm. I'm really conscious of showing up authentically to who I am. Yeah. You know, like if if someone met me, say say I don't know, they follow mm. Jolamia Swim and they see me online, yeah. I would hate for someone to meet me in person and go, oh, she's not like that. Yeah, you know, that would yeah. make me feel really icky inside. Yeah. I always want to show up as who I am and just be like, yeah. okay, yeah, that's who she is and. 
you know, she's no different in real life to what she is on the Jalamia swim page. Yeah. Or, yeah. And yarning and stuff. Like even just us yarning earlier. Yeah. yeah. And now, like, you're yeah. exactly who you are. Cameron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. That's good. So that's, that's what I want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> and, and people have told me that too, you know, like, oh, yeah. you're exactly like what you are. And I'm like, well, of course, I'm mm. not going to be anything else, you know. Yeah. And I think also that's what gets you, like, a lot of opportunities and connecting with a lot of different mm. people is because of your personality. And people can feel yeah. that. People can they feel can. that authenticity. They can feel that energy as soon as they meet you, Mm. which is good. Mm. With your experience in various fields like cosmetic tattooing, aromatherapy and natural deodorants, Mm -hmm. how do these diverse skills contribute to the uniqueness of Jalamaya Swim? Um, Well, obviously, I suppose cosmetic tattooing and beauty Mm. ties in with fashion and those two are kind of fashion and beauty are, you know, one and the same almost. Natural deodorant and the sort of aromatherapy side of things comes from the caring for country side of things and being low tox and being conscious of, you know, environmental impact. So I think that's where all of them tie into each other Mm. and um, I think that's what helps the brand. It it has those foundation, it has those values already Mm. input into it. Yeah. So it makes it kind of easy to just flow with it, you know. Yeah. It's like caring for yourself and caring for country as well. It's like a a nice tie. Yeah, and I I think as as Aboriginal people we probably Mm. should be aware of those things, you know. Like, And I like to incorporate a lot of that into our home and the kids are seeing me like, you know, I wonder when the kids get older what they're going to think and they're going to see all this stuff and they're... Even now, my daughter, she, you know, she wants all the nice little like smelling fragrance yeah. lip gloss, and I don't deny her, but I make her aware and say like, yeah, there's this, or you can use this, and chemicals, and blah blah blah. So that's where it sort of comes into the brand as well of yeah. being conscious of what things are used with the brand, and even even things like um, now that I'm go- going more into the manufacturing side of it, you know, you know when you have like when you send things out and there's tissue paper and there's cards and yeah. there's you know business and there's all this kind of stuff, I put on my website and say that I don't include a lot of that stuff because it's just landfill. Yeah, you know, it you is landfill. About, actually, when you get when you get it, you go, oh yeah, great. You look at it for three seconds and you just throw it, throw yeah. it away. It's it's. It's not necessary. Mm. Yeah. Um, so that's something that I put on my website and I kind of explain to my customers that I'm not going to put all the, you know, bells and whistles in there. They're going to get their swimwear and that's basically all they get. Yeah. Um, just to keep the, you know, the um, con- eco-conscious vibe going. Yeah. Mm. There's a lot of conscious consumers now. So I think exactly. we're in that um, mm. kind of age where everyone is starting yeah. to move towards that and starting mm. to be more, I guess, environmentally friendly. Mm. And, mm. yeah, that's really good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, that well, my cousin, are. you know, like she sent me – now mm. she's aware of it, you know, because she buys yeah. a lot of my swimwear. And um, she'll send me videos mm. of when she shops online and she's like, this is all just crap. I don't need this. Like yeah. why have I got this in here? You know, this is so unnecessary to have extra shit in here and just throw it away. So yeah. I don't want to be one of those brands that's just putting stuff in there to look pretty. We've got so much technology now that yeah. you use that to your advantage rather than needing all of this landfill. Yeah, I think that's mm. also why it kind of gives me – I get a bit overwhelmed when I see all of the plastic yeah, and yeah. everything it's at the moment. Yeah, even toys, are just yep. so much. I'm like, oh, yeah. I just want to be a minimalist. Yeah, um, and, and I'm, <laughs> yeah, and that's the other thing. Yeah. Right? I'm, a, I'm very much a minimalist in my home. Yeah. I'm constantly making sure we have minimal things. My husband's hmm. always like, why don't we have this? And I'm like, oh, well. Yeah. You know, even little things like um, – like the freezer bags, rather mm. than getting Ziploc, you can get like silicone ones. So yeah. everything's like reusable in the house. So I try yeah. and be conscious of that even, you know. Yeah. Um, even when if I'm say if I'm sending things out, um, I'll reuse mailing bags and things yeah. like that. Just because it's just, you know. It's better for the environment. It's so much well. better for the environment. More sustainable. Yeah. And I've seen that there's some um, actual... Uh, plastic bags that are biodegradable. Mm. Like you can uh, mm. put them in water and they... Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. what that's all the stuff that I'll be looking into yeah. with the new manufacturer and being really conscious of, mm. you know, tags and just those extra things. There's extra um, little details as well. When I yeah. went to markets recently, the hygiene strips, I made sure that they were like a craft kind of yeah. um, paper rather than the plastic. Yeah. Just so it had kept that kind of eco-conscious thing going. Yeah. Mm. That's definitely... Mm. 
it's good to see, you know, it makes me feel happy because sometimes you say you're in fashion and you're like, oh, there's already so many, you know, things happening yeah. with fashion. But And it's landfill good as making, well. Like, you know, when yeah. you look at the statistics with fashion and landfill, yeah. it's pretty bad. It's, so I think if we mm. can be conscious of what we're doing, yeah. then... You can that, make real change. Exactly, yeah, you know. Exactly. And, and right. even with my new manufacturer, what I'm going to be doing is I'm not mm. going to be doing like mass production. It's going to be really small collection yeah. drops. So I'll have, you know, a quantity of mm. this current artwork and this design and once it's sold out it's sold out it's not going to be constantly reproduced so I'm going to have stock sitting there yeah it's just they're just going to be one-off drops so people can also look and go mm. oh I remember when that collection was you know like if people yeah. are out and about they can go oh, I remember that collection oh I remember when she did that mm. so it's that's more unique as well it's more unique you know you yeah kind of um people yeah. know they have like a one-off piece it's yeah. not like oh great you've cool you've got that it's just oh wow you know you, you managed to get that one yeah, yeah. it's almost like it's limited edition exactly like, and yeah. people that's, love getting yeah. it limited edition because they know they can't get it again, exactly which is really good yeah closing the doors of brow mania due to covid impacts led to the takeover of giddy giddy your natural deodorant brand mm -hmm. how did this transition shape the d direction of jillamaya swim so at the time i was really upset with having to close the doors with brow mm -hmm. mania because I, I still love cosmetic tattooing i actually tattooed my lip my friend's lips last week and I'm probably going to tattoo mine mm. next week. So, you know, like mm. I, I still do love it. Yeah. Um, but it's not the sort of – it's it it wasn't sustainable at the time. Yeah. Um, and being entrepreneurial and kind of like wanting to work by myself, yeah. I never wanted to take on a team. Yeah. So maybe if I had taken on a team, it could have kept going, but I didn't want to yeah. do that. So I kind of had that internal struggle. Hmm. Um, I was lucky that I introduced Giddy Giddy into the salon and it used to fly off the shelves. It Honestly, mm. it was so popular. I was constantly having to restock and I yeah. had a manufacturer that was making it at the time. And mm. then I kind of looked at my costings and I thought, you know what, this is going to be more profitable for me if I learn how to make it myself. So yeah. that's when I went and did aromatherapy and I learned how to make everything on my own. Yeah. So I included that. Mm. So even I think making things, I have to be working with my hands and yeah. having that aspect of it. And the labels have my artwork on it. So yeah. all the giddy giddy labels have my artwork on it. Mm. So then having giddy giddy going into Jalamia swim is kind of the same thing right of having mm. the artwork incorporated into it and being mm. able to do something where I could be at home as well yeah. because you know my husband and I made the decision that it was better for me to be at home rather mm. than you know fi me finding an income I suppose that I can do from home because he works a lot of the time yeah we wanted at least one parent to be constantly with the kids yeah. or, or, or with the kids as much as they could be. They're school age, right? So yeah. I always wanted to be able to pick my kids up and I always wanted to be there for every assembly and everything. I never mm. want I never want to miss anything with my kids. Yeah. And yes, he misses a lot of things, mm. but at least we always know that one, one parent will be there. And sometimes mm. there's two because FIFO gives you that, you know, that lenience as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's when Jalamia Swim also came about too because it was something that I was able to do mm. and able to still be there for the kids. So yeah. it's kind of, whereas with the salon, I had to be I had to be at the salon to be making money. Yeah. Whereas with Giddy Giddy and with Jalamia Swim, I don't have to be somewhere, you know. I can dedicate time when the kids are at school mm. and I can work on it then. And then outside of those hours, things are still ticking over, you know, like this morning I was getting the kids ready for school when I heard a sale come through. So yeah. it's nice to be knowing that I'm, you know, tending to my children, but I'm also getting also, paid at the same yeah. time. Yeah. It's really good that mm. I guess COVID had a good impact, but it didn't. It yeah. did and it didn't. It did yeah. and it didn't. Only just because, yeah, um, a lot of people are more flexible working from yeah. home now. Yeah. Um, but it's sad that all of these... Um, you know, salons and yeah. all these stores that people wanted to go into yeah. have closed down because they couldn't afford it. And that's the mm. thing, like Brow Mania was it was it was well known, you know. Yeah. Like it was it was a, the only only salon in Perth. Mm. I had Aboriginal art every, yeah. artwork everywhere, the logo had it and mm. lots of my customer base were Aboriginal women. And yeah. that was nice too to have to be sort of one of the only salons in Perth mm. that had that. You know, and yeah. people would, people would fly down from the Pilbara. Anytime they'd come from up north, yeah. they'd come and book in with me. You know, I had regulars that would literally want to come down just to get their eyebrows done. Yeah, and I I, I feel I had some guilt, and I still feel guilty about that today that I don't have that. Yeah. and I would love to say if I ever got the money to be able to have a salon 
that I could do something like that. I'd love to. Mm. Again, you know, I'd love to have my hand in lots of different pots. Yeah. But... Because it's nice to go to places as well you feel comfortable. Well, and that was the thing. Mob. Exactly. Yeah. That was the thing that a lot of the girls felt really comfortable rocking up yeah. there. They, you know, um, I had a client and she's she's well known. She's, you know, ex-netball player. Hmm. And I remember speaking to her and she was like, oh, yeah, I've walked into salons before and I've been asked to pay before my treatment. That. And I was like. Yeah, that's happened to me as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly right. You know, yeah, and like, I was like, that's shit. You know, you don't do that. You, hmm. you treat everybody. Would they be doing that to someone else? No, they wouldn't. You they, know. They don't say it to anybody else, but they'll say it to you. Exactly. Directly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, Which and is so, quite sad. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. her sharing that story. And then, like, she was hmm. sitting in my salon one day and she was on a FaceTime call with um, Patty Mills. Oh, You know, right, so yeah. like. You think they're asking her to be yeah. paying for her treatment up front mm. when she's a very professional woman. This conversation came on, there's a hairdresser in Perth and she's mm. doing very well at the moment and she talked about balance. Mm. And I don't know if there is balance as such. Like yeah. when my kids were young, that was my time for me to be at home and that mm. was the sacrifice my husband made by he went to work and I was able to be at home with the kids, yeah. you know, they were both breastfed, all that sort of stuff. So I, mm. my time was fully focused on them until they sort of got to an age where they were able, like my thing was I never wanted to send them to daycare until they could walk and talk. Yeah. That way they can express themselves, they can get away from situations if they need to. Mm. So it wasn't, it didn't come until then, which is probably why brow mania, you know, started when it did. Um, mm. because my son was able to go to daycare so I could do it. Yeah. Um, and same thing with Jalamia Swim, you know, mm. it's able to come about now because I have more capacity to be able to do it. Mm. So I think that's where that comes into it is that learning, understanding, I suppose, that I couldn't do it all. You know, yeah. when I had my kids, I wanted to put all of my time into them when they were little because I felt that was really, really important to sort of nurture them when they were really small. Um and I think it's paid off because my kids are what I hope they would be, you yeah. know. They're very they're very confident in themselves. Like my mm. son started school this week, last week, sorry, and, you know, people saying like, oh, how's he going? And I'm like, he's all good, but, you know, <laughs> he's, he's got his Lego, you don't care. Yeah. Like he's like, bye, mum, you yeah. know. And both the kids, they're really confident mm. and I think that that's because I've been able to spend that time with them. Yeah. Um, and I think for my husband, he... He knows he's sacrificing his time at work yeah. and he's pouring money, you know, like we talk about capital and things like that. Yeah. He, he knows that he's putting money into this because yeah. we have the hope that it's going to pay off one day. Yeah. So he's not going to have to work as hard as he does, you know, in his 40s and in, in his 50s. Like yeah. I would love to be able to earn enough money so that he only had to, like, I think he, he likes FIFO. He likes the FIFO life. I know yeah. a lot of people don't, but he actually really likes it. Mm. If he could do like an eight and six roster, that would be yeah. great, you know, and not feel the pressure that he feels to have to go to work. Yeah. Um, be yeah. hard for him as well it to be is. away from the kids. It is, mm. you know, he, he, and we, you know, we talked about that recently and he sort of got upset that he is away from the kids so yeah. much. But I hope that, you know, I think he, his thing is that, when kids are teenagers, they need their dads a lot more. Yeah. And he's hoping that by the time they're sort of, you know, starting high school, that he's able to be back here in Perth yeah. a lot more. So that's what we're, the common goal that we're trying to work towards. To build a brand, mm. yeah. Mm. And that's, yeah, that's a great goal to yeah. work towards And, it's, well. and it, we're a the team, family. you know, like I, yeah. I know, and I put this a lot on my website and people sort of say like, oh, you know, it's like a one woman show. I'm like, well, it's not really a one woman show because, yeah. you know, you've got my husband who busts his ass. My mum helps out a lot of the yeah. time with the kids when she can. And like my parents are both going to retire this year. So the kids are probably going to be spending a lot of time with them. Yeah. Um, even my brother, for instance, like when no one's available, he minds the kids when I've got stuff on, you know. Yeah. So there's all these people that are in the background. My dad, he's constantly building things for me, you know, mm. like if I need something built, he'll do that. So I'm sure if I ever got a shop front or something, he'd be in there. Old boy yeah. would be like doing <laughs> something. <laughs> Here's that, you got me yeah, there. Yeah. I'm right there. <laughs> so, you know, there, yeah. there are all these people in the background mm. that have helped me get to where I am. Yeah, I'm mm. exact same mm. situation. Mm. That's why a lot of the time you just got to thank your team, I guess, because yep. they're always there helping yep. you out. Yep. It's just not like a one... One woman show? No. Yeah. Especially when there's kids involved, you know, yeah. like there, there needs to be 
a lot of people involved yeah. to help and make sure that the kids are getting what they need. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And it's good bonding for them, I find, when oh, you're it's like when they're watching them when you're away it's doing great. something. It's great. Like, you know, yeah. when I went to Singapore last year mm. and my son, like, because our kids still sleep with us, you know, black fellas are like. Yeah. Um, I, I know exactly. Yeah. So, last night. Yeah. <laughs> like, they still sleep with us. And my son had never really. Like, he loves to cuddle me at night time. Mm. So that was kind of his first night without me and just being with his dad. Yeah. And um, my husband FaceTimed me and my son just burst into tears and he was like, no, when you're coming home, I want you to come lay with me. Yeah, and no. But I thought to myself, that's really nice though because, like, he now has to be, like, with his dad and, they're yeah. you know, they're getting that bond. And now they're far, like, the two of them, they just, like... Yeah. Hang out. They'll sleep. I mean, he loves his dad. He's always wanting to be with his dad during yeah. the day, of course, and doing all the boy things. But at night, he wants mum. Yeah. But the boys are always like that, yeah. I find. Um, yeah, exactly. Do you have one boy, one girl? Yeah. Yeah, same. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a very similar situation as well. Yeah. Right? And you're getting that nice contrast of the two of mm. them, you know, the two different personalities. Yeah. And, and that, that's another thing, actually, that I'll touch on, speaking of the kids, is that people want – I think when you've got a brand – people want to know the ins and outs of it and that's probably one part that I keep quite private is the kids. Yeah. Um, I'm very conscious of like not saying their ages and not saying yeah. their names yeah. and, you know, if you ever see them in my um, in my videos in the back, it's always like the back of their heads or it's like a yeah. silhouette. Like I'm quite conscious of them having a really small digital footprint Yeah. because um, I don't want to expose them to the world too much and yeah. that's hard, right, because people do want to know hmm. – behind the scenes of a brand but mm. there has to be aspects that you don't really share too much even my husband he's a very private person you know he doesn't yeah. really like to he's introverted and just yeah. likes to be in the background you know but yeah even just being a mum is like part of your branding as well Well, that's you exactly connect. right and yeah. that's that's the hard thing is that yeah. like you know it is so my daughter was in um the second collection the paranga collection and mm. sarah and i my photographer we spoke and Sarah's like, do you want her in uh, her face? I said, no. Like, and she, lucky Sarah already mm. knew. She was already aware of it. So, like, a lot of the shots are, behind, like, you know, taken from behind or the side or she's like a silhouette. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's good. I mm. think that's great where you just show a exactly. snippet and you don't have to yes. show that. And because my daughter wanted to be part of it, right? That's yeah. the other part of it. Like, she wants to be part of it. Yeah. But, you know, you don't know what she's going to want in 10 years' time, you know. Yeah. She might. Exactly. So you've just yeah. got to sort of draw that fine line of hmm. how much involvement and how much you show them to the world. Yeah. And also mm. if people recognise them out in um, public, it can be, like, con not concerning, but... Um, well, exactly. Yeah, yeah, like it, yeah. it is. It's like, good there's to so keep many weirdos. Bit of privacy. Like, yeah, yeah. Many, like you know, when you expose, like I've got with TikTok, you know, you really realise how many shitty yeah. people there are in the world. TikTok you know, is TikTok one of the big. It's big probably one of the most toxic, toxic apps that are yeah. out there. You know, when I look at my comment section, yeah, that's um, horrid. Exactly. You shouldn't check the comments in it. There, yeah. Yeah. TikTok. Yeah. I think it's worse than Instagram at the oh, moment. Oh, it is so yeah. much worse. I've had to mm. filter my comments because yeah. I get that much racism on there. Yeah. People you know? just get triggered by proud black women. It's just really sad, really. Yeah. But yeah. I get all sorts of comments and I just sort of and but you know what, it's not just it's not just racist stuff. Like I've gone onto a bloke and he was like cutting someone's hair hmm. and he got all these nasty comments and I'm thinking, yeah. he's just bloody cutting somebody's hair. Like, what are, what are you guys that miserable that you have to say something negative, you know? Yes. It's like they hide behind these profiles. I actually had one which was yes. quite funny recently. I'll mm. tell this little yarn. Yeah. <laughs> so there was one Spill video and I got lots of comments and I ended up turning the comments off. But before yeah. I did, I went through the comments and there mm. was this one, this boy, and he made a comment. I don't know what it was. I screenshot it. Hmm. And then I went on his profile and I looked at his name. So I searched his name on Facebook. Yeah. Then I searched his parents on Facebook and I found them. And then I found out where his dad worked. So I replied to him yeah. and I said, oh, I said, oh, yeah. I said, is your dad's name blah, blah, blah? And does he work for blah, blah, blah? <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden he like, yeah, all of a sudden he like blocked and deleted me. <laughs> As I was thinking, like, yeah. don't, don't think that you can get away with stuff on the yeah. internet. Like, I will I will call you out on it, you know. Exactly. I thought it was hilarious. I was laughing about it for ages. Yeah. And I just, I just use sarcasm. But, <laughs> like, with my kids, right, this is where I don't expose them because they're yeah. too young. Like, their brains aren't mm. developed yet to, like, to laugh at it. Yeah. You know, like, they, they might get really, really, really upset. Yeah. Mm. Might get upset by it. So that's why another reason I'm conscious of yeah. not and sharing them. Yeah, protect them, them as well. Mm. Yeah. 
It's yeah. just terrible, some of the people you have to put up with out there. Yeah. yeah. You want them to have a bit more accountability nowadays? Yeah, exactly. And that's all why. These trolls. That's why. Like, mm. And even the, like all the old boomers, like there was a um, – someone shared something on Facebook mm. and one bloke commented something and I went on his profile and he said that he worked in Yundamu. What? And I was like – I said, oh, yeah. I said, Yundamu's not very small. I said, I'm sure I could find out where you work. Yeah. And then, of course, once again, deleted his comment. Like, <laughs> don't – you know what I mean? These people yeah. think that they can do these things. And yeah. But you can find a way. You can find a way. Yeah, you can find a way to see. Because yeah. the thing with using the internet, you leave you have traces. To be, exactly. You have to yeah. be conscious of what you're putting out there. Yeah. You know, you have to be conscious of what how you're portraying yourself. And Exactly. Mm. So that's why it is a scary place, the internet. Mm. But it's also a good spot because mm. then you can, you can make them accountable exactly. when you find out. Yeah, exactly. It is, there's good and bad things about the internet, mm. you know. Yeah. And I, I think if you can use it to your advantage, then it can work really well for you. Yeah, mm. exactly. Because mm. it's good for um, promoting your work and mm. stuff like that. And it, the exposure that yeah. you get from it, you know. Like yeah, some exposure. of my TikTok videos have like 4 million views. Like that's amazing. That's and it's, not, it's actually not my... Jalamia swim page it's my personal page but oh. I like I always try to in a lot of my videos like I'll either drop Jalamia swim or I'll be wearing it you know yeah. just a really little subtle thing Subtles. to get it in there yeah. so it's still in there so you're promoting if, an event exactly if someone yeah. sees the video then they'll go oh yeah and then I've got my link in my bio as well and then they'll go there and have yes. a look that's awesome yeah. isn't so it? I can see like my hmm. traffic on my um, Shopify page yeah I can see when it goes up and how many hits I'm getting on the on the website because it's good. You could get a lot of traffic from mm. your personal page as well because you are a personality. Yeah, like. and it shows mm. me. So it'll show like on the Shopify, it'll show where the traffic is coming from. Yeah. And yeah, TikTok's one of the places that I can get it from. So it does have a positive yeah. aspect a, to it. Yeah, it mm. does. And I think someone there was, yeah, uh, someone did something bad on TikTok and then I think the lady said, can we find this person? And they found him. <laughs> The, the TikTok yeah. community found yeah. him and then and that's, that's got him fired. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. I, sometimes I almost want to, like, you know, really follow it up with these people, yeah. but I just threaten them a little bit yeah. and then, you know, leave that's, it at that. I think that's the best way. You yeah. Just like, oh. yeah. Looking ahead, what are your aspirations for Jalamea Swim and how do you envision the brand's impact on Indigenous perspectives in the fashion industry? So I want the brand... I want the brand to be, like... A well-known brand mm. but it's like an on-the-ground brand and it has that really sort of community feel to it yeah um, I'm not wanting to go into like the big chains I'm wanting it to be yeah. on the ground really little boutiques yeah. um, and having it there yeah, I don't nice. want it to be a massive kind of like huge um, what's the word mass-produced kind yeah. of thing I want it to have that exclusiveness that it yeah. has at the moment um, and I just want it to be well. I want it to be known. Like you know, I think of other brands. They're not Aboriginal brands, but they're Australian brands, mm. and people just know them, right? Like you know, like um, for instance, Moana Bikini. Yeah. You know, she's like she's got a personality as well. This girl, mm. and like she's built her personal brand and her swimwear brand at the same time, and they work yeah. really well. And she's got a really work. cool community of people. That's yeah. what I would like to do. And I just, I like I said before, I want it to have like the Māori culture where it's celebrated by everyone in New Zealand, you know, yeah. everyone really celebrates Māori culture. I want it to be the same thing here mm. in Australia and I don't, like, I don't just want it to be, like, white Australia. I want it to be all of Australia, yeah. you know, like the multicultural Australia and mm. having that sort of exposure to people like my, you know, my daughter's last school. Yeah. I want, like, the African community and the Asian community and the Muslim mm. community. I've got my um, my cousin-in-law, she is Muslim, mm. and I'd love to have her in one of my shoots. Yeah. So I've been thinking about how I can get, like, a swimsuit that would be good for her to be able to wear. Yeah. You know, I want it to sort of cover all those aspects. I want I want everyone to feel like they're included and, yeah. and thought of in it. Uh, the long scuba outfits. Yeah. yeah I well, I thought of getting like it. Yeah, I really mm. want to bring out a um, a one piece with long sleeves anyway because yeah. people are really requesting that. Yeah. And then I could get like a legging, you know, which could be used as an active wear kind of thing. But yeah. I don't really want to go down the active wear path. That's not yeah. really what I want. I want to be kind of like swimwear, resort wear, this kind of stuff. I don't yeah. really want to do the whole active wear thing. So that's where I'm a little bit torn. Yeah. Even if I had like, a, you know, say like, I don't know, like the long 
rashy kind of thing and then maybe some really nice like linen pants that she could wear you know yeah. and, and a scarf like a sarong that she could kind of wear yeah so yeah I've tried to sort of think about all the different ways of incorporating lots of different people yeah and a bit of coverage some a lot of people like to be sun smart as well so mm. it's good to have yeah that well I've already option. had some cut out so oh, I've yeah got to be sorry aware about of it. that mm. it's horrible isn't it but yeah you gotta be very conscious. and then they said that they're like oh it's gonna keloid like because obviously the black fella blood right yeah it's keloid and of course it keloided mm. so it's just there as a constant reminder for me to put my sunscreen on yeah once again, lo- low tox sunscreen. I'm there, yeah. like reading all the ingredients in the shops of what's on mm. there. <laughs> but sunscreen can be quite um, not toxic, but uh, I get reactions from sunscreen. Mm. I mm. have to get a specific one without perfume because mm. uh, it really yeah. reacts to my eyes. Yeah. So, so my son, yeah. he reacted to the chemical sunscreen. Mm. So I took um, like a natural one, and that's the other yeah. thing, right? In daycares, they have to be all labelled, so that's why I'm reading all of the things in the background. All the yeah, all the mm. ingredients. Mm. Sometimes you just got to really yeah. check. Hey, yeah. as really? another thing that I'd like to promote on my Jalamia swim page mm. is like low tox, you know, beach things, you know, linen yeah. and like the sunscreen, and you know, there's all these like Accessories. even lip balms and stuff, and leave out the fragrances and yeah. bring all that, you know, have it a whole kind of thing. Yeah, and then people can buy packages as That's well a, yeah. for gift sets. Yeah, um, they're really big at the moment. Yeah. I'm excited because I'll be, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'll be your number yeah. one customer I'll give you some there. tips after this. Yes. I'll send you some brands. <laughs> yes, please. I'm excited <laughs> for that. Because I love all things fashion and I love yeah. all things skincare, yeah. all things makeup. There's a place in Leadable, um, yeah. the Bear Theory, and they do all low-tox beauty. Oh, I've got to look into them. polishes and stuff. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm going to hit them up because uh, yeah, I like to treat myself, mm. you know. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Thank you so much for joining us and we can't wait to see what is next for Jalamaya Swim. Thanks for having me.